The Galagloss or Galuga originated in the Hebridean Islands in Western Scotland. They were of mixed Scots, possibly Norse, and eventually, during its 400 year history, Irish stock. The Galagos professed to have no fear of death and considered his place in the forefront of battle and as rearguard in retreats. Most of their origins claims they were from Norse settlers who started to settle and intermarry from the 10th century, although Scottish clans would soon get in on this lucrative mercenary trade. One translation for the term Galugla comes from the Irish Gaul meaning stranger and Ogla meaning youth or hero. They were typically men of great stature and strength, with a fearsome reputation in battle, often being handpicked from within their clan for size and military prowess. It was also hereditary, the training was tough, they were bound to strict rules of conduct by their constable, a title given to the commander in charge of what the English called a battle, now known as a battalion. Comprising of 200 to 400 men, including their knaves, these men were often above the law, with records showing they literally got away with murder, but they could be hung for disobeying their constable or lord. Large numbers of Galagos Seps settled in Ireland after being either dispossessed for supporting the wrong side during wars in Scotland, or just having their power in the region overtaken by a rival. The McSweeney's are a good example of both. Others remain seasonal travellers, appearing in the spring and summer offering their services to the highest bidder, often returning back to Scotland or roaming from chief to chief, offering other services in Ireland till the fighting season started again. They were well equipped. Amongst their weaponry were huge razor sharp battle axes, broadswords and sometimes massive double handed swords known as claymores. Unlike their largely lightly equipped Irish compatriots, who usually fought with bows, darts and spears, preferring to skirmish tactics rather than long drawn out battles. The Galagloss would be better protected either with a coat of mail or a padded multi layer coat which could be worn as a further protection under armour. This was normally surmounted with a crusted steel helmet or bassinet. Each warrior was accompanied into battle by two knaves who would assist in carrying weapons and provisions. The first record of Galagloss service was in 1259 AD. They were of Clan McDougall. They were given as a dowry to A. E. O'Connor, King of Connacht. He was given 160 of these warriors from the daughter of Dougal McRory, the King of the Hebrides. In return for military service, Galagloss contingents were given land where they were entitled to receive supplies from the local population. The importation of Galaglosses into Ireland was a major factor in containing the Anglo Norman invasion of the 12th century as their ranks stifled the resistance of the Irish lordships. Throughout the Middle Ages in Ireland, Galagloss troops were maintained by Gaelic, Irish and Hiberno-Norman lords alike. Even the English Lord Deputy of Ireland usually kept the company of them in his service. By the mid-15th century, Galagloss had become the backbone of virtually every Irish army and were very much a permanent feature in Ireland. The McDougalls were soon followed by other Galagloss clans McDonald's, McCabe's, McSweeney's, McDowell's, McSheehy's and McRory's spreading to all the provinces of Ireland and becoming an indispensable part of Irish martial society. An example is the McDonald's or Clan Donnell as they were later known, arriving in County Mayo in the early 1400s, establishing themselves throughout the county. In Kilmeen under payment for military service they would eventually acquire land and castles and become a permanent presence in Mayo. The Galagos could be steadfastly loyal to their paymasters, refusing to yield in battle, but they were soldiers of fortune, turning their hand to any number of tasks that suited their special skills, assassinations, cal raiding, martial training and constables who would police the area. It was not unusual for Galagos of the same clan to find themselves facing each other on opposing sides in battle such as the Battle of Knockdown in 1504 and the Battle of Shrule in 1570, where the Queen's forces, ably assisted by the Earl of Clan Ricard, head of the Galway Burks, faced the Mayo Burks under the McWilliam Burke, with Galagos factions on both sides, including MacDonald. Over time, the Galagos fell into two categories, those who served a specific lord and the freelance soldiers who wandered from job to job 
often compared to the samurai and ronin of medieval Japan. Galu Glasu fought for a single lord, whether Irish or Anglo-Irish, they served as house guards and were at hand for whatever task of arms the lord deemed necessary. Lords often rewarded the constables of such units with legal contracts granting them land and privileges. An exceptional warrior, one of unquestionable loyalty and skill with weapons, might serve as the Lord Galloglass, taking responsibility for his employer's safety and answering all challenges to personal combat made against him. Only the wealthiest lords could afford the long-term investment of a personal force of Galloglass. Inevitably, as the ranks of the original Galloglass thinned, from attrition and age, local Irish men of sufficient strength, stature and ambition applied to join the elite group. And although they continued to be referred to as Scots, a number of Galaglass clans eventually comprised mainly of Irishmen. The selection process remained strict, the training brutal and the prospect of violent death high. That they committed atrocities is also beyond dispute, with many observers of the time stating a number of crimes these men would often commit. However, this was a generally accepted form of warfare for the time. As ruthless as the Galaglass was in combat, he did adhere to a code of honour. One precept was a refusal to desert the Lord who had hired him, even under the most hopeless of circumstances. There are many records of these men fighting last stands so their Lords could escape. The late 16th century started to see the end of the Galaglass, with the introduction of firearms and after centuries of frustrating the English. Queen Elizabeth I decided to try and eradicate this warrior caste from the new Ireland she was trying to recreate, forcing lords to take responsibility for the crimes of their mercenaries and disallowing the Galaglass to serve in English armies while having captured ones killed after battles. Despite the increased use of firearms in Irish warfare, Galaglasses remained, taking part in the Nine Years' War and the Irish defeat at the Battle of Kinsale in 1601. Although Scottish Highland mercenaries continued to come to Ireland during this time, the new wave of Scottish mercenaries would be called Redshanks. The Galaglasses of McCarthy are recorded as having attacked Mallow in County Cork as late as 1645. But Ireland's warfare was changing, and these men soon found themselves being left behind. Some left for Europe, but those who chose to put down their axe and farm their land in peace soon would find themselves uprooted and replaced by incoming Presbyterian settlers from Scotland. And the warriors that dominated Ireland for over three centuries were no more. If you wish to learn the genetic trail of Galloglass clans, I suggest checking out Irish Origins. They have done fantastic work mapping out the genetic markers. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and if you wish to see your clan history, leave a comment below.